Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Love and Daily. I'm your host, Sam Vasallo, joined today by uh, JP Atsopardi. It's a lovely Tuesday morning. We have a lot of interesting stories to share with you, so let's get right into the headlines. So the first, very good news, uh, global news, promising COVID-19 vaccine has been found to be 90% effective. Meanwhile, Christmas in the city, plans for, Mo- for Valletta have been unveiled. Maybe it will save Christmas this year, who knows? Meanwhile, Jason Atzapardi has suspended himself from Parliament after bribe allegations. In more global news, Pete Buttigieg eyes a major role in Joe Biden's cabinet. And lastly, a Maltese visual artist has, shine, has shone a light on Malta's ills. Um, just to tell you, this episode is sponsored by uh, the National Book Festival, which celebrates book culture in all its forms. There's really something for everyone this year. Of course, it's online because of the pandemic, but just to give you a little bit of information, it starts this Wednesday, the 11th, and ends uh, Sunday, 15th November. Kids and adults alike will get to attend the online festival for free and indulge in a spirit of inventiveness, exchange and creativity. Uh, kids' events can be streamed right to uh, schools' classrooms, and all events will be streamed on ktip.org.mt, um, on Facebook, so, and some events will also be streamed um, on our page at Love and Malta. Guests include award-winning novelist Salman Rushdie and best-selling Israeli author Iram Katz. Super cool. So let's get right into the headlines, shall we? Yes, absolutely. The first story, a uh, global breakthrough uh, in the, go- the search for a COVID-19 vaccine was made yesterday. Uh, pharmaceutical giants Pfizer and BioNTech found their vaccine, uh, one of many vaccines actually on the trial, to be 90% effective against the COVID-19, the novel COVID-19 um, virus. Obviously, it's uh, promising news, uh, news we were hoping to expect towards end of the year, obviously, as we ramp up to finding or closing on a COVID-19 vaccine. Um, you know, if this drug is uh, approved by the drug authorities, then we could see it uh, um, come to the market end of 2020. But, uh, you know, the, the World Health Organization and, and medical experts are predicting that Really, we see this drug mass produced and on the market in by spring 2021. Um, so while we are hopeful for a beginning of 2021 um, uh, uh, release date, uh, it's more likely that we'll see the vaccine come out and, and, and go across the market throughout the first half of 2021. Um, just to give you some more details on the actual vaccine itself, uh, the trial participant, participants who partook in the vaccine trial, this is the phase the trial of the vaccine found, um, you know, after 20 days, 28 days of taking the vaccine, they were uh, inoculated. So it's a 20 day, day period for them to find out that uh, it worked against the vaccine, uh, against the COVID-19. Um, promising news, but obviously Malta will have to wait, wait a bit longer until the vaccine hits the market. When it does, uh, Chris Ferdinand said that we will receive it shortly after. A nice silver lining to, to uh, end the yeah. um, Meanwhile, in COVID-19 news uh, for Malta, we've had 102 uh, new cases registered in the last 24 hours. So we're still in the triple, triple digits over there and a 62 recoveries. <clears throat> so active cases are still relatively high. We're almost hitting the 2000 mark. In fact, there are 100, uh, uh, 1980 active cases at the moment. We've also registered three deaths. Uh, yesterday, uh, quite sad news. There was a 79-year-old man uh, who tested positive on the 1st of November and died yesterday while receiving treatment at Mata Day. An 87-year-old man who tested positive on the 3rd and died yesterday also. And lastly, a 75-year-old man who tested positive on the 6th. So uh, rest in peace and our thoughts are with the families. Uh, moving on. Christmas in the city. Plans for Valletta this December have been unveiled. So cases are still in triple digits, as we've seen, yet uh, you know, the government has gone ahead to unveil you know, festive activities, as, as there are always in Valletta uh, at this time of year, especially this year to, to kind of boost economic activity you know, for businesses that have been really mm-hmm. hit by the pandemic. Um, a lot of controversy, you know, according to whether people agree or not. Essentially, the plans are to extend um, opening hours of retail stores, free parking, for people, of course, there'll be the usual decorations and lights and choirs and uh, you know, opera singers um, and 
uh, Valletta Cultural Agency Chairman Jason McAuliffe said, um, Christmas, COVID won't kill Christmas after all, you know, mm, a very dramatic yeah, statement yeah. to which uh, much to the dis dismay of uh, our doctors. So essentially the Malta Medical Association responded directly to this quote and, and told Jason McAuliffe, you know, COVID might not kill Christmas, but it will kill a lot of vulnerable Maltese sure, people. So sure. this is still a stock reality, you know, that we're going through, whether it's Christmas mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. um, they, they warned that there are over 80 patients in Mata who yes. are seriously ill with COVID-19 and, you know, cases are still in triple digits. It seems that, that um, according to them, you know, the July scenario with, with mass events was a kind of test tube for what's coming in December. Um, we'll see how the government reacts to, to, the, to the latest um, accusations from the medical union, essentially. I think you see this, this kind of trend, you know, amongst many other countries as well. I mean, a lot of, a lot of countries in Europe, including the UK, are currently in a lockdown, trying to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in hope that people can celebrate celebrate the Christmas, the festive season. I think it's a very important time of the year for a lot of people. Uh, we don't want to miss Christmas, obviously. It, it's a great time, especially in Malta, when the weather starts cooling down. Um, so, you know, there has to be a sort of what sort of compromise between, uh, you know, it, it's the economic impact as well. You say retail stores stay open for longer. Uh, obviously, people need to, there's a lot of money to be made during the Christmas season, people buying presents and whatnot. So, um, you know, the, thing, the hope is that by the time we come to Christmas time, we can celebrate it in some fashion. But obviously, we have to be a bit more considerate this year. Um, but I'm sure, I'm hopeful that we won't, you know, we will have Christmas. So to speak. In some way or another. In some way or another. <laughs> Moving on to our third story. Uh, Jason Atapardi has suspended himself from Parliament after bribe allegations. I think the biggest story to come out over the weekend. Uh, Jason Atapardi, the um, uh, uh, Member of Parliament and the PN spokesperson for Justice and the lawyer of the Daphne Caruana Galizia family, um, suspended himself after new revelations that in 2017, the Tumas Group paid for a five-day stay at the Hilton Hotel in Tel Aviv. Now, as I'm sure we're all aware, Tumas Group is owned by Jorgen Fennec, the main uh, suspect in the Daphne Caruana Galicia case. Jason Artspide, on the other hand, has been super critical and of anyone who had uh, any involvement with Jorgen Fennec over the past few years. He obviously represents the family of Daphne Caruana Galicia. So, uh, the fact that, you know, these revelations came out Three years later, and amidst everything that's happened over the past three years, and his stance is taken on it all, is quite shocking. The fact that he didn't own up to it in the first place, because I did, you know, had he had he owned up to it, I think it wouldn't made much of an issue. But the fact that it's he it never came to limelight until it was brought up. Since then, a lot of stuff has happened, a lot of drama uh, involving the, the the MP and lawyer. Um, he suspended himself uh, and has asked the Ethics, Discipline and Social Media Commission to investigate him in relation to these revelations. Uh, he is also suspended from uh, the PN's shadow cabinet until the investigation is over. So he's not looking, it's not looking like he's in a good position. Goes to show as well that, you know, Jorgen Fennec had his finger in all the pies in Walter, really. And uh, it seems like everyone was friends with Jorgen Fennec. But put into context, you know, back in the time, it was a, he was a before all this happened, he was a good contact to have. He was a, a wealthy businessman in Malta. I'm sure he had a lot of contact with, with a lot of people. But the fact that Jason Safari never, never really had talked about this until now is, uh, I believe, is quite shocking. What do you think? I do. I think it just it just shows us how deeply embedded this culture of uh, bribery mm. is in Malta. And I mean, even though Jason Safari himself said that you know it wasn't a bribe and and, and he just you know left the hotel and, and he was paid. Um, without ever thinking to pay it back, um, I think I think it's a stock reality, and I think it's 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 one of the one of the things that we have to deal with in Malta. We want if we want so-called good governance and and to be uh, you know the proud EU country that we want to be. Um, I think an interesting um, article in in this sphere was written by our uh, Love and Malta CEO Chris Perjean, who talked about uh, you know. Uh, a previous uh, bribe allegation, essentially, not really an allegation, but a leading journalist from Times of Malta, mm -hmm. Ivan mm -hmm. Martin, had mentioned um, that you know he refused a bribe from Jorgen Fennec's lawyer. You know, I think that just shows how blatant it is. Where, where, where this culture, mm. this culture, and I think that that's something that we definitely. Um, need to, to seriously think about moving forward. Now, before we get on to our next story, we want to show you a, a small clip of the National Book Festival just to give you a taste of what you can expect.
So next to our, uh, our next story next, <laughs> uh, Pete Buttigieg eyes a major role in Biden's cabinet. So the Maltese American um, politician Pete Buttigieg is expected to form part of President-elect Joe Biden's cabinet uh, when he takes office. And rumor has it that he's eyeing a key role at the United Nations. So the once Democratic presidential candidate has joined Biden's team along with 14 other uh, advisories as the president gears up to take office in January and several media outlets have claimed that Buttigieg is a near certainty for a cabinet role. Um, Buttigieg has served in the military, in the US military, mm -hmm. has served abroad, he's um, a multilinguist and um, he's told friends apparently that he wants the, the role of US ambassador to United Nations but he may face competition from a long time uh, Biden foreign policy confidant, who is Julie Smith. But I suppose we'll get to see this um, in, the, you know, in the coming months. I think it's super, it would be super cool no, to, to have, I mean, it was already very cool to have uh, someone with Modi's heritage, you know, be yeah. a Democratic candidate, and now he might actually form a major part of um, US government. He, he may, he may. I mean, it's not, it's not set in stone yet, obviously. Uh, it seems like something has been uh, sorted out between Biden and to judge uh, some some deal because uh, if, you, if you you know cast your mind back to last year in the Iowa caucus and beginning of this presidential election run, uh, Buttigieg was doing quite well in the primaries, um, but actually after winning Iowa, he decided to and you became second in New Hampshire. He decided to drop out the race, which was a bit of a shocker, but it all makes sense really because he uh, endorsed Biden after that. And I imagine Biden said, you know, if you endorse me, you'll get some sort of position in my cabinet and whatnot. So ever since then, Biden, uh, Buttigieg has been uh, endorsing Biden, uh, showing up on, you know, media houses like Fox, Fox News, discrediting Trump and really pushing for Biden's campaign. And now that he's won, he forms part of this transition team. And, um, you know, like you said, they, they, it's a, quote unquote, a near certainty that he will form part of Biden's cabinet in some way or another when the president-elect takes office, office in January, if and when Donald Trump concedes. We'll have to see because that's another, another whole um, bag of tricks in itself. Um, moving on to our last story today and quite a powerful piece of visual art uh, coming from a Maltese artist, Nathan Portelli, who shines uh, shone a light on some of Malta's ills. Um, basically, Nathan um, created this exhibition, or not an online exhibition of his, of his artwork that portrayed, forced us to really examine Malta society. Uh, um, his, his work depicts, you know, certain aspects of Malta's uh, uh, pain points, um, mostly revolving around, um, you know, how money plays a key uh, role in, in or underpins a lot of our decisions in Malta. I mean, we just talked about Evan Martin, we just talked about uh, Jason at Supparties. You see that money really speaks and really is the underpinning factor for a lot of things that happen in this country from, from our, how we, we, we deal with climate, from how we treat our environment to how we treat our archi architecture. His paintings portray, you know, 50-year-old uh, notes on the backdrop of, of, of some of Malta's most iconic churches and whatnot, um, and the church is torn apart, or the painting is half complete, really symbolizing the fact that money is tearing down our values in society. Uh, and, you know, also theme, underscoring themes of politics, environments. We see one painting with a, a, a turtle on it, and around it it's these, these sort of uh, abstract images of plastic bags and uh, whatnot, and obviously it makes you reconsider uh, our values in society and really what drives us in more. So we have this, I believe we have this, you know, facade that we, we really push for an environment that we want to. Uh, we have all these NGOs and whatnot, but really what motivates and drives people here is the pursuit of money, whether it's real, real estate 
or, or politics or whatnot. Uh, it seeps into everything and it's really uh, kind of derailing um, our core beliefs, I think. So Indeed. have you had a chance to look at the, at the paintings? Yes, they, they, I, I really actually really like them. They're, they're very much up my alley. I think that sometimes art speaks louder than words, you know, mm -hmm. just seeing mm -hmm. um, something portrayed like this, a beautiful yet tragic portrayal of, of, of multi-society um, nowadays. That is all from us here at Love in Malta. This was another episode of Love and Daily. Be sure to keep up with all our socials. We're on Twitter, we're on TikTok, we're on Facebook, Instagram, um, the latest updates in culture, memes, news, whatever you have it. Um, just to remind you, this episode was uh, sponsored by the National Book Festival. It starts on Wednesday, ends on Sunday. It's to do with anything to do with with books and, and culture and, and all of that fun stuff. And this was Sam and JP. Have a day full of loving.